Hello and welcome to another video. I realize I've done a bunch of videos on PyTest on my channel, uh, and I'm a core dev of PyTest, but I've never made a video just doing a nice little quick start to show you the basics of PyTest, so I figured I would record that, and that's what this video is. Anyway, let's jump into it. I think even if you've used PyTest a lot, there will still be some small tidbits that you can get out of this, uh, but... Anyway, let's get started. So PyTest is a testing framework. There is a testing framework out of the box in Python called unit test. Uh, and unit test is fairly old. It is around from, I believe, even the original release of Python. Uh, and it sort of tries to mimic what you would get from like a Java unit testing framework. You, know, you have a bunch of class-based things. You have a bunch of assert methods on those classes uh, and you tend to write setup and teardown functions as well. Um, and so that's kind of the classical way to write tests. Uh, PyTest is backwards compatible with unit tests. So if you already have a unit test suite, you can run that directly. Um, but we're, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna show that part of it today. Okay, uh, so in order to get started, we need to install PyTest. PyTest is available on PyPI. And I forgot to activate my virtual env. Uh, the current version that I will be showing today is version 7.2.1. Uh, PyTest is a fairly mature uh, package. It's been around for a very, very long time and has many, many users. And it also has a very rich plugin system. Uh, that's part of the benefit of PyTest is if you have some behavior you want to customize, there's probably a plugin point and there's probably already a plugin that does what you want. Uh, the, I guess, approach to testing in PyTest can take sort of three forms. Uh, and I guess technically plugins can add more, but typically you end up with function tests, which is what I mostly prefer. I'd rather write function tests than anything else. Uh, I find that inheritance makes tests harder to understand, not easier. And uh, the classic unit test based approach for testing stuff kind of forces you into a class based test box. Uh, you can also write class based tests in PyTest. You can, you can write you know, classes as a way to group tests, uh, which can be nice, but I usually encourage not doing that because it it's a slippery slope to writing a bunch of, you know, inheritance for convenience classes that uh, spiral out of control. Like we had a we had a base test class at Yelp that was nearly a thousand lines of code because people just were like, oh yeah, something might need this. Oh, go up the inheritance hierarchy. Oh, I gotta go put it in the base class. Now every single class has to have this functionality. I don't like that. I like to import what I use and PyTest encourages that behavior. Okay, so we are going to write a small test and then I'm gonna show you the way that I organize tests in a repository by looking at some other repository they have. Uh, so let's say that we had code to test. I'm gonna put it in this t.py and it's just going to be a very silly, simple, uh, piece of code here. We're going to write a function that is going to, let's just call it square. That'll be an easy function to test and demonstrate some behaviors here. Uh, we'll take a, a float and return a float. And uh, I'm going to start by not actually implementing this so we can show a little bit of TDD at the same time. Uh, now, what I recommend is naming your tests consistently. There are two main conventions for naming tests. One of them is t underscore test.py, where uh, it matches the module name, and then there's underscore test at the end. The other approach is to do test underscore t. I don't like this one because uh, this makes tab complete one more thing that you have to tab through, whereas if you know, oh, I'm looking for the test for the t module, I'm going to type t, press tab, and get this file. Uh, now, typically, I will put them in a subdirectory as well so that they're away from the main code, um, but I just wanted to show you a quick setup of this here. All right, so we are going to import t and we're gonna write a test. Test in PyTest start with the word test and usually you wanna describe what it's doing. Uh, so let's do test square. And if we do, uh, in PyTest, you write plain assert statements and there's some <laughs> AST magic behind the scenes that rewrites these such that you get nice error messages even with plain asserts. Uh, so typically when you write an assert, you're gonna write, you know, assert, some expression that must be true, and then some error message when it's false. In PyTest, the best practice is usually to leave out the uh, message and PyTest will generate a nice one for you. Okay, so we're gonna do assert t.square5 is equal to 25. That's just a nice little quick test that we have here. And uh, if we run this, you can, you can run it using PyTest. However, this is actually gonna run into the first 
uh, quirk of PyTest, which is that it, oh, actually, no, it worked fine. Hmm, something has changed. Anyway, uh, oh, I know why, because this is in the root directory. Okay, cool. So we run this, we get a nice little error message here. You can see that we expected to get 25, t.square returned none, uh, and PyTest helpfully showed us the expansion of that expression and, and why it returned none. Uh, if we go to implement our function and we implement it wrong, let's say return two times x, uh, you'll see that PyTest will also give us a nice uh, assertion message that shows us the wrong value, even if it's not none. And if we implement this correctly, uh, you'll see that we get a nice little output. The other cool thing about PyTest, it has a bunch of things out of the box that are very useful. For instance, you might think, oh, okay, well, we test an integer, let's also test a float and uh, make sure that this is also the right value. Um, so you would write two, fun two function tests and those pass. Uh, you might deal with floating point weirdness. I can't remember a particular number, but um, this actually isn't a true equality here. Uh, PyTest has a nice little helper that you can import directly from PyTest called pytest.approx. Uh, I usually try and avoid this. Uh, if I'm getting approximate values, I probably have something wrong with my code, but uh, this can allow you to test something that, well, let me show you what the error message would be if we didn't do this. Uh, so you can see it tries to test within some epsilon value. And so you can get a nice, uh, if you have something that's approximately equal. Uh, the other thing that you can do is, uh, if you're, you know, you have a whole bunch of these tests and this code looks almost the same as this code, PyTest provides a thing called parameterize. Uh, parameterize, which allows you to write a bunch of uh, table style tests, basically input and output tests. So you could say that uh, you have uh, input n and then expected, and then you can write a series of tables here. I did a full video on this, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail here. Uh, but this allows you to sort of write a single test that expands out to many other ones. Now, this might seem cool and you might say, oh, I could rewrite a whole bunch of tests to remove some duplicated code. I find that this really only works well if you have one explicit input and one explicit output. I see a lot of people trying, oh, these are supposed to be strings. I see a lot of people try and add, you know, like um, is float and then they'll pass in, you know, booleans here, and then they'll do you know, logic based on that inside the test. I find that it makes the test much harder to read. So use this, I guess, sparingly, but it is kind of nice when it does work. Um, and you'll see if we run this now, we get two tests, even though we only specified one. Uh, note that I used the dash V flag here. PyTest by default is pretty quiet. It doesn't show you the test names that are running. It doesn't print any output, um, but you know, if you do dash V, you can see the, the test name and how it expanded out. Oh, speaking of output, PyTest also by default hides any output. So if you're using print debugging, for instance, if you wanted to say, what is input N here? Uh, and we run this here, PyTest is, is going to hide that output by default. Uh, you can turn on input and output by passing dash S, uh, which will you know, show, you that, uh, show you your print statement. So if you're a print debugger, dash S is kind of your friend there. Uh, now, I said earlier that uh, tests can be both function-based, which is kind of what I've done here, uh, and they can also be class-based. So if you were to write you know, a class, you could do this. You don't have to inherit from anything special, although I do believe you need to name it with the word test in it. And then you could define your functions like this. Uh, you know, assert t.square 3 equals 9. So you can write uh, class-based tests if you need to group stuff. I tend to avoid these. If you're reaching for grouping, you probably want to split things into separate modules and then use the module boundary as your grouping mechanism. Uh, but you'll see that PyTest now is able to run this class-based test as well. It can also run unit test-based tests. So if you have legacy code that uses unit tests, let's say we did import unit test. It's actually, oh, not in my imports order. Oh, well. <laughs> if you had a, uh, a a legacy test, test legacy unit test dot test case, 
F test, whatever, assert, uh, you would use self.assert equal. That's the other thing that's a little bit clunky about unit test is you have to use these weird uh, camel case uh, functions. But uh, even if you have unit test based cast tests, PyTest will run them as well. So you can see we have that legacy test there. Now, the other thing that I want to show you is how I tend to organize tests. And for that, we're going to clone some repo that I've written. Uh, let's do PyUpgrade. Sure. So PyTest supports kind of two different ways to organize your tests, uh, either in tree or out of tree. So what I mean by in tree is Py, Py upgrade is a package. Uh, you could imagine that you could define the tests directly in line here. You know, you have a test directory inside Py upgrade or inside any of its, uh, you know, subdirectories. And PyTest does support that. So you could run just PyTest Py upgrade. It would iterate through all of the modules here, find all the tests, and run them. I find it's it feels a little cleaner to define them separately doesn't actually really make a difference beyond you know, whether you're distributing your tests or not. Uh, but I like to put them outside of the package. That way they're always at the top level. It's very easy to find them. And I save one level of you know, typing a directory and tapping through them. But otherwise, it's basically the same. I usually organize my tests uh, matching the module name that they're testing. So you can see I have a string helpers test here. And if we look in PyUpgrade, you'll see that there is a string helpers I guess I probably should have matched the underscore, but whatever, close enough. Uh, you'll see that I have in my tests, I have an underscore plugins directory that matches the plugins directory of PyUpgrade. upgrade. Uh, you know, I have a main test, which is testing this main, et cetera, et cetera. So I try and match the model name with the test. That way it's pretty obvious where the things are being tested from. Uh, the other thing you'll notice about my test directory is I put init.py files here. Technically, PyTest does not need them. It will still be able to discover all of your tests and run them appropriately. I find as a best practice, it's good to include this for two reasons. The first is some other tools don't really understand if you leave out init.py. Uh, namespace packages are, I want to say a new feature, but they're not really anymore. It's been like 10 plus years. Um, but a lot of tools don't really support namespace packages all that well. The other reason is PyTest has a little bit of a quirk in how it makes module names based on the things it finds here. And if it doesn't find init.pies, it doesn't try and make a hierarchy. It, try and, it tries to make every uh, test file flat, which means if you have two test files with the same name, they'll collide. So I just recommend putting init.py. Uh, but anyway, that's kind of the quick intro to PyTest. It's a test framework that is backward compatible with unit test. I recommend function-based tests. It has nice assertions out of the box. There's a whole bunch of plugins that you can use. And yeah, that's what, <laughs> that's what I use to test everything in Python. Hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.